Hi everybody, it's Steve on the Guru Brew. I thought we'd go ahead and do a class on limit and home switches for CNC. I get a lot of questions from beginners that uh, are curious about the home and limit switches. And you can run your machine without them, but it's a good idea to use them. And so I thought I'd clear up some of the confusion and give you a little class for the beginner on home and limit switches. So let's get started. Okay, so what is a home and limit switch? They're just actual little switches that uh, have usually an arm on them and when you bump into them they click now this is a micro switch type this one is a little reed type switch and when you put the two contacts together it makes a connection and usually they have two or three contacts on them this one has two and this one has three i'll clear that confusion up in a minute but uh, usually you just use two wires to make these go and these are placed on the machine itself and what happens is the machine parts bump into them and make a signal to the computer to let the computer know that it hits the switch now there's a couple reasons why you would use them home is one and limit is the other let's talk about limits for just a moment that's probably the most useful and in, in uh, used really on your X, your Y, and your Z, you can travel from, say, 0 to 10 inches. If you had a 10-inch machine, if you had a 20-inch, it could go to 0 to 20. But for a moment, let's just say 0 to 10 on your X and 0 to 10 on your Y. And let's say your, your Z, your actual spindle, can travel 5 inches. And we'll put graphics behind me on the screen screen to help you to visualize this anyway usually each axis has two of these switches one on one side and one on the other so you would have six in all for a three axis machine for limit switches their job is to let the computer know when it has reached the far reaches of the machine so if your machine is traveling along and it bumps into the switch it knows that it can't travel any further that is the limit of your machine and if you don't have these you could actually drive the machine past the limit and start to destroy itself it'll actually you know tear up screws or it can uh depending on how powerful your machine is it can do some real damage so these protect it from going too far and that's the limit part of it now the homing part of it is to find a reference point so you know where you are in relation to the size of the machine often you can use the same switches that you would use for your limits for your home you can use in Mach 3, um, one set of switches to do two things, or you can have, you know, a, a separate home switch as well as a limit switch. Now, before we get into talking about that, I mentioned that these have two wires on them, and that is sent to a pin on your control board that lets it know when this is touched, okay? Now there's two different types of these as far as how they work. Now there's optical switches, there's reed switches, there's micro switches. But as far as the types are concerned, there's something called normally open and normally closed. And what that means is if, if the switch is not pressed and it's a normally open switch, no current can pass through the terminals, okay? But if you bump a normally open switch, then it's closed and it allows electricity to pass through. Now the other type of switch is normally closed and that simply means if the switch is not pressed, then electricity is allowed to pass through and if the switch is bumped and then electricity is stopped. 
Now, if you're a hobbyist and you're making your own machine, you'll probably have to put your own switches on, whereas if you buy a machine, it already comes with switches. The best type of switch to buy to put on your machine would be a normally closed switch. And again, that means that if the switch is not pressed, it allows electricity to flow through. If it's pressed, then the electricity stops. And the reason behind that, it's safer because if one of these wires becomes broken, you know, because these wires do move with the travel of the machine often. So if one of these wires were to break and the switch is normally closed when not pressed, the machine would stop and you would recognize that there's trouble because the machine won't move because there was nothing on the switch versus a normally open switch which would move and then when it bumped the switch it wouldn't stop so normally closed is a safer switch to get and you can tell Mach 3 what type of switch you have so you can use normally open or normally closed I hope that makes some sense but depending on what two terminals you use would be normally open or normally closed on this type. This type only has two terminals, so this would just be a normally open switch. Now, as far as the placement on these, if you have, a again, a 10-inch machine, and you're traveling, let's say, on the X, you're going from 0 to 10, you would have one of these near 0, and you'd have another one near 10. So when the machine come along and it got real close to zero, it would bump the switch. It would tell Mach 3 that this switch was active and it would stop so you wouldn't hurt anything, okay? And the same with going towards the 10 inch way, it would stop and it would signal that you bumped into the switch. And each of the three axes would have a set of these switches. So that's the limit part of the micro switches. Now the homing part of the micro switches is it tells the Mach 3 exactly where zero zero is on your machine. When you're running a machine, generally you'll pick a corner that will be zero zero or home. Now, generally, on a regular tabletop machine, the lower left-hand corner nearest you on your left side, right there, will be zero, zero, X and Y, will be that far reach corner, zero, zero. So you wanna start from that position every time. And there's a button on Mach 3 that you can press that says reference all. So if I press reference all, Let's say the X will go first. It'll go towards zero. Let's say it's at eight. It'll go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bump the switch, stop, and then it will reverse direction until it just lets off the switch, and then it will zero the X axis and call that zero. And then the Y will also find zero, bump the switch, stop, and now you have two dimensions and that is zero, zero. As far as the Z, the actual bit to your router, the top of the material, if you have a three quarter inch piece of wood sitting on the table, the very top of that material, if your bit is just touching the material, is considered zero, zero. Anything above that, if you bring your bed up and you move it along, that would be in a positive direction. When you start cutting into the material, that would be in a negative direction. So if you wanted to cut three quarters of an inch down into the material, that would be a negative 0.75 number for your Z axis. So <clears throat> what I'm trying to get at here if you don't have separate home switches, you can use your limit switches as home. And there's a setting in Mach 3 that allows you to use the switches for both. So if you're using the reference all button to find your home position, 
the switches become home switches. If you're cutting or you're traveling just using the arrow keys, then it becomes limit switches. And Mach 3 keeps it together and it knows, you know, the difference. So what home does, again, if I hit reference all, it'll find zero on the Y, zero on the X, and that will z then stop at zero, zero, and set my DRO to zero, zero. And that is the position that I start when I cut. So I always know that's the home position. And then when the job is done cutting, the bit, the machine will return back to that position to start again. Now, there's also offsets, and I don't want to confuse you, but uh, once you find that zero, zero position, when you first start up your machine, you may want to put your material, let's say, in the middle of your machine, and if you had a 10 by 10 inch machine, the middle would be five and five, right? So there's two separate coordinates systems in Mach 3. There's the machine coordinates, and that has a button that you can press to see what the machine thinks is zero, zero. And there's a job offset number um, coordinate system, and that would be where the material would be, where the corner of the material would be that you want to start at. And so I hope that helps to um, give you an idea of what the coordinate systems are. It's simply letting you know where the machine is sitting and where the job material is sitting before you cut. So we're going to leave it at that, and this will take care of the mechanical side of things. Hopefully you got a good understanding about the micro switches. Next time we do a video on this subject, we're going to go into Mach 3. I'm going to show you how to set up the pins, how to set up your home and your limit switches, and how to share switches. I mentioned that the home and limit can be one switch, and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll continue then. Okay, I hope you got some use out of this. Thanks for your attention, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Did you take something that doesn't belong to you? Don't give me that grin. I know you're guilty. Yeah, and you don't like banana peppers either, do you? <laughs>